And for more on this, we're joined now by radio host Alex Jones. Uh, so, Alex, as you saw from Dina's story, it seems like we hear a repeated theme when it comes to the Tea Party movement. Uh, most of them talk about liberty and freedom and how they want as little government control as things as possible and less government spending. But when, when it comes to these international organizations like the UN, the World Bank, the IMF, many have expressed that they have uh, too much control of the United States and they suggest that you know the United States shouldn't be involved in those organizations. Yet we have lots of other people people who criticize the UN for being too American and not really representing um, all the countries that are part of it. Uh, what's your take? Who's right? Well, first off, Priya, and, and I've never done this before on the 30, 40 times I've been on, I just want to say that was an amazing report sitting here waiting to go live. And that really showed all the different angles. It, it made this extremely complex uh, issue uh, very, very transparent. And uh, one of your earlier guests in the piece uh, was talking about how the UN programs actually are killing indigenous people and shutting the land off to them. And then Webster Tarpley talked about how the UN was created by the robber barons that control this country. It's not really the US, it's these financial interests. And how the Security Council has all the real power and then Obama violated Article 1, Section 9. It is an act of treason when he seated himself earlier this year as the head of the UN Security Council. So the, the, the outer body, the General Assembly, is just a market for the uh, five main players to come in and buy them off. And the arm to do that, to really set up neo uh, feudalistic uh, colonialism is the IMF and World Bank. And we've got IMF World Bank internal documents that came out in 2002 where they admit they want post-industrial world in the West. They want to block the third world and developing world from developing so that they won't be independent and strong. So the aims of the real UN are the opposite of what it publicly uh, states, helping right. the poor. Go back to last year at Copenhagen. They told the third world, come vote for it. Then the Danish text got released and it said more taxes on the third world on carbon than even Western Europe, the United States, uh, England and Canada, and that it was actually meant to shut them down. And so this is really the British imperial model uh, picked up by the Fortune 100. And I feel sorry for the Tea Party because the real Tea Party was started by Ron Paul supporters like myself in 2007, trying to get a true constitutionalist, a true conservative against war. Uh, in office and it was taken over by the republicans they should love the u.n it was created by the military industrial complex okay alex you know uh, you're saying something that a lot of the guests that I spoke to today also uh, said. But, you know, many people would argue that the UN Security Council has implemented programs like the UN Assistance Mission in Afghanistan, for example, that brings food and supplies to the people there. Or, you know, what about the Pakistan flooding? Uh, the UN was there bringing yeah, aid to the millions of people, you know, who were stranded and homeless. Or, you know, look at Sudan or other African countries that are largely ignored by the rest of the world. I mean, many people would argue that without the UN, millions of people around the world, this year would have died. I mean, how can you just ignore all that? Sure. If you want to catch a fish, you got to put a worm on the end of the hook. So the UN puts a worm out there, but there's a hook inside of it. And your earlier guess was spot on. $450 million in aid assistance, but then they're going to basically have to pay uh, interest on that. The IMF and World Bank make this money up out of nothing, and then it's backed up by U.S. taxpayers. U.S. taxpayers are used to fund uh, this global engine of tyranny, and the UN is its political velvet glove on the Iron Fist. But inside the Iron Fist is the U.S. military, NATO alliance, the I-4 system. And when you read the internal UN documents that are public, they want a world population reduction of 80%. Biological diversity assessment, 1996. They want a global tyranny. They funded China with its failed one-child policy. I mean, this is a purely wicked organization. My film Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement, free on YouTube, three hours long, details in their own okay. documents that this is a green Nazi world government eugenics movement wrapped in a humanitarian package. It is pure evil. Okay, Alex, I wanted to uh, get a word in here. Uh, you know, I don't know if this has ever been a dream of yours, but say if you got, uh, you know, your hands on the UN and you were in charge of it and you couldn't just get rid of it, uh, what would you do to fix it? Is it possible to fix it? Uh, you know, is there any solution here? Well, that's a great question. Uh, 
the United Nations inherently was designed for fraud and corruption and taking over sovereign nations. Uh, it's also being used at the international level to pass laws to take U.S. sovereignty. That's the globalist model. And so you, you can't do anything good with the U.N. overall because its mission is to set up a covert uh, world government that's now come out into the open. But the first thing I would do uh, would be get rid of the Security Council if you're going to actually have this democratic you know, body and then have resolutions for criminal investigations of the IMF and World Bank and the private uh, central banks uh, that are involved in all of this corruption with them. And I would have a, 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 a world movement uh, not to get rid of sovereignty, but to honor sovereignty and to have nations work together uh, and to be honest and transparent about right. this and to dismantle this global corporate system uh, that has been expanded through the United Nations. Well, I think that's a very valid critique, and I think that's one that uh, probably a lot of people would agree with you on. Uh, that was radio host Alex Jones joining me from Austin, Texas. Great to talk to you.